Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful for this time. As we transition from our prayer to Bible study, we want that same spirit, that same anointing, same power to follow us into this service. Lord, illuminate your word in our hearing. Let us ingest and digest your word that we may grow by it, that we may be strengthened by it, that we may understand you better, that we may live that which we have received of you. These things we pray in the master's name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let all those people say amen and amen. All right, we're grateful this evening for this opportunity to come before you. This is the last week in the series we've been talking about assessment. So for the 12 months, we've been talking about discipleship, right? Making disciples, becoming disciples, all the, the nuances relative to being a disciple. But tonight, what we're going to talk about is the last week of assessment. And so we've assessed ourselves in different ways, right? We've, on week one, we assessed our, our spiritual health. You know, we went through a lot during the summer. We went a lot through COVID and we had to assess, you know, what shape am I in? And so I made the analogy of my own you know, trials and tribulations having been uh, hurt before, having had um, uh, my Achilles torn and, and, and the struggle for that, to come back from that. And so that's the same thing. Spiritually, we've had all kind of things happen. We were we didn't know what was happening in March and things happened in March and April and we came out of it and we assessed. We could still walk. Um, we could still do things. Maybe not what we used to do, but we still have strength. And then each week we've been building on that theme of assessment. This is our last week. And so this one's going to be a tough one because at the end of assessment, then you need to do an evaluation, right? At the end of any assessment, you need to do an honest and thorough evaluation of who you are how you act, or how are you going to go forward from here. And before you can do that and determine how you're going to go forward, the best way to determine that is to look from where you've come from. How did you even get here? And if you can understand how you got here, then that's the best way for you to move forward from here because you'll understand what it took to make you who you are right now. And sometimes that's the toughest thing to do because we have to assess ourselves and minimize our influence in how we got here because guess what? As much as we think we got here because we're smart, because we're funny, because we're cute, or whatever the attributes you think you have, the truth of the matter is, number one, we got here because of God. Of course we know that. But also, we got here because there were many people in our lives that got us here, that prayed us through, that taught us different things, that walked with us, some that are not here anymore, but they gave so much to us that left, led us here. And that is so important for us to understand. And so tonight, I'm always challenged by my uh, media team to come up with a title for the Bible studies. I typically don't title them, so I guess I have to get used to doing that. So tonight, I'm going to call this particular Bible study so they can put up some heading, Many Me. Many me. Uh, you remember, the, um, I don't know if, how many of you are Austin um, Powers fans, and they had the uh, little character that was um, playing uh, Dr. Evil's uh, diminutive twin, and he was small, but uh, um, and they called him Many Me. Well, guess what? Tonight, we're going to be Many Me. What do I mean by that? We need to be Many Jesus. Jesus is the, the, the main character. Jesus is the overarching character. But guess what? Our job as Christians are to be many me's for Jesus. That we should be smaller Jesus, which means that we must decrease so that he increases. As a matter of fact, won't you grab your Bibles? If you have your Bibles, we want to cover three specific scriptures. And if we have time, maybe even the my favorite Romans 12 and 1 as a fourth one but let's go through first and we want to start I guess at the oldest so let's start in Psalms Psalms 20 and 7 Psalms 20 and uh, you know what I'm gonna do Psalms 20 I'm gonna read Psalms 20 and 1 and read up to 7 so you have some context of what I'm saying okay Psalms 20 and I hope you have it um, 
And it says here, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Uh, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Listen, some trust in chariots and some in horses. That's the seventh verse, and that's the part that I'm extracting from this. So I gave you the other so you understand that, listen, the Lord is blessing us and all that, but it's not because of us. Right? Because we trust Him and we don't put our trust in anything else. That is, is going to be the theme for tonight. And I want us to really, really you know, drill down into that because sometimes that sounds so simple, so simplistic. Like, of course we don't trust, but no, sometimes we do and we don't mean to. There are often times that we have more confidence in us, more confidence in the things around us than we need to have. And when we remember where we come from, and we remember the folk who taught us, there are times that we'll, uh, we'll understand a lot better that guess what? It has always been God. It has never been your education. It has never been your degree. It has never been uh, y y your seminary uh, uh, training. It's always been God. And if we, once we put other th trust in other things, we lose the power of God. Oh my goodness. I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm aching to get to that point, but let me bring another scripture um, so that we can make, make a little more sense of this. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, that's after Psalms and, and, and before uh, uh, Hezekiah, before uh, uh, um, Hezekiah and Malachi, right? It's right in there, a small book of Zechariah. And we're going to go to the fourth chapter, right? Excuse me. Yeah. Up the fourth chapter, and we're going to focus on the sixth verse. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to just go straight to that sixth verse. And it says here, Then he answered and spoke unto me. You know what? No, no, let me just give, I got to do it. I got to go back and give you the whole context because I, I just don't like being out of context because it's so, it's so rich and full. So I hope you don't mind all the, the scripture reading. Um, let's just, just start at 4 1. And the angel who talked with me came again. So that gives you context. Here is the man of God. He's in a dream state. And the angel well, came again and talked to him and, walked, and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it and seven lamps on it and seven pipes to the lampstand. To the seven lamps which are upon on top of it. So he had this incredible dream about these lampstands, these intricate lampstands, right? And then what else? And two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the, and the other on the left side of it. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, well, what are these things, my Lord? So he's asking the angel, I had this crazy dream, what is it? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. He said, he, Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Jerusalem, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord for the word of God. And there's so much more. I don't even want to get into it right now, but the bottom line is, once again, the Bible's affirming that it's not by our might, it's not by our power. That Psalm said, what, well, some trust in horses and, and some trust in chariots, it's not by might, it's not by power. Again and again, that theme continues to resonate with us time and time again. And then let's go to, uh, you know what, let's go to John 3, 
in the New Testament. So those were, that was the Old Testament reading. Uh, we're going to go to the New Testament, and, 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 and I, you know, I'm going through this pretty fast, I understand. And so uh, you might have to listen to this again <laughs> uh, and, and catch these scriptures. If it is too fast, please forgive me. But my, my heart is just racing right now to get to this word. It's so rich. John 3, 27 through 30. And John 3, I'm going to start at the 27th verse, 26, right? And this is John the Baptist. All right, so you remember John the Baptist who came prior to Jesus Christ. Uh, um, the Bible lets us know that they were uh, uh, related, cousins, if you will. And John um, had baptized prior to Jesus um, coming on the scene in his ministry, and, and, and except John was like, I'm not the one. There's one coming that's greater than I, whose who's, who's, uh, last laces on his shoes, I'm not even worthy to tie. And on the 27th verse, John says what? Um, they asked him different questions. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. All right? Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am set before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. Here's the 30th verse that we're going to focus on tonight. He must increase, but I must decrease. I must become many me. So this evening, with those three scriptures in mind, I just want to talk for just a few moments about us in our assessment of our walk with Christ as we go next month is going to be fantastic because next month we're talking about anointing that disciple that you have been training, that person you've been talking to, how that you have the what the gifting, if you will, because you've been working with them, because you see the anointing upon them. And you now, what when I say anoint them, you now affirm to them and affirm to the world that this now is a person who's sound, who's ready to go and, and minister in whatever area that ministry is going to be, whether it's in music, whether it's in preaching, whether it's in teaching, whether it's in serving, whatever it is. But that's, that's I'm getting ahead of myself, that's next month. But it's important to know because now as we do our assessment, right, that we're saying, okay, I've got to import into this person, but I can't pour any of me. I've got to now continue to decrease, 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 so much so that what Christ can increase and that the influence that a person has that I meet, a person that has that I train, that I talk to, that I witness to, they must leave with the impression that it is Christ and not me. And, and there are things that we got to be careful about because, and I always bring this up, because culturally, right, we are uh, uh, attacked all the time. I'm going to use the word attack. And the reason why I use the word attack is this, that we uh, very often mix and we, we, we take our culture and we take Christ and we think the two, it's this water, you know, you ever, ever have oil and water and, and you know you mix it together, the oil is going to rise to the top and the water is going to separate because the two don't come together. And the same thing is true of, of, of Christ and our culture. Christ is counter culture. He was counter to his own culture and he's counter to our culture now. And the more we try to bring our culture in, the further we get away from Christ. If you remember, we were reading in Timothy. And what did he tell Timothy? He said, perilous times would come. Right? He talked about um, that, listen, people that begin to try to in include their culture and do that. He said, you need to get away from the kind of people. Um, Paul often talked about it. And the, and the New Testament talks about you got to be careful for the company you keep, the spiritual company you keep. You can't keep everybody and have and, and, and believe everything. You can't not have all kind of uh, weird doctrines floating around. It will mess you up. One of the biggest ones we've seen for the last 20 years is kind of fading out now, I pray. But we talked about uh, prosperity as a gospel. And that, and Paul specifically said, anybody talks about godliness to be gained, 
He says, get away from them. It is very, very harmful uh, to your spirit because what happens is you're not preaching a gospel uh, at all. It is just stories around Jesus Christ and you're making God Santa Claus. You're making God like it is a casino. You know, if you give him $100, he'll give you 1000 back. And it's like you're sitting at the... At, at the at the one-armed bandit and you're putting money in with the expectation of getting something back and there have been many people wounded because they felt God failed them but what happened is that that theology failed them because it was flawed from the very beginning and so when we preach anything other than the gospel of Jesus Christ we stand guilty right of it. we're not supposed to add anything or take anything away from this book here and when you take it, and, and you know, people try to take it and make it their own gospel. They come up with some uh, uh, cockamamie ideas that, 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 that soothe their way of thinking. And you know what? That's why we must study to show ourselves a proof unto God. Workmen that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the word. And so we've got to study and we have to be, be contextual. Not all over the place, not take one sentence and one thought and then make a whole religion out of it. But we've got to be make sure that we're sound students of the word, sound in the word and sound making sound decisions relative to the word. And so we have all kind of doctrines floating, all kind of things. And Paul said in the last days, this is going to happen and, and people, there'll be a great falling away. Christ talked about that uh, and we brought that scripture up as well. I think we were in John at the time. And so there are different times where the Bible is telling us, listen, people of God, you've got to be, you've got to be centered in the word and you've got to be uh, uh, grounded so much so that nothing can stir you. This thing called Christianity is nothing about us, but it's about us minimizing our thoughts, our patterns, our way, and even the culture of our times must be, uh, 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 I'm sorry to say it must be what diminished over the gospel. The gospel is large. Our culture is just so we can walk back and forth. Yes, we have to do some things. I mean, we have to we wear clothes according to our culture. We eat food according to our culture. Those things that we cannot get away from for the most part. But guess what? There are other things that we have ingested and unfortunately digested that's not of God. Uh, we've been eating things that are harmful for us, and we have now are facing the spiritual, uh, uh, um, um, the spiritual sickness, if you will, the spiritual uh, results of not eating a healthy diet of the Word of God and eating our cultural things. I'll give you some examples. For instance, and I'm and listen, I'm not talking about you. I'm as guilty. I think we all are, but we got to get out of it. We have to find a way to get rid of the things that that, that have gotten us. Listen. I grew up, what, what did they tell us when you were a kid? Go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job, all that stuff. And then we made school what is the largest thing in our lives. And some of us did. And we made our education largest, even in the church. And so we started seminaries and we started all these things. And we have these, these, you know, these, these people who are studying and they get all this deep, deep knowledge. And we began to believe. Now, this, the knowledge is not the problem. The knowledge is wonderful. The Bible says study. And so we take that scripture. The Bible, didn't the Bible say study? You just said that. I did say that. But I never said that the person who studied, right, was superior to the person who has relationship with God. I never said that your study in and of itself took the place of having power with God. For even Paul, remember we read with Paul, Paul said, listen, ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth, right? Having a form of godliness. The problem is today that we have a form of godliness, but the, the barometer to measure whether it we're in step with God is not just having a form of godliness, but having power. And if you don't have power, uh, then you don't have what you need. I'm convinced of this, and, and I told you we got to go back. I remember the time, and I'm you know, not that old, but I remember the time in a, when my grandparents, or they did not have a big education. I, I, don't, I don't even know if they graduated from junior high, let alone high school. I know they didn't graduate from high school. My father's mother and father, they didn't graduate. They didn't have that. They had to go to work at 13, 14 years old. They, they were married by 16 and had 12 kids and all that stuff. That was the culture of the time. They didn't even think about college. That wasn't even a possibility. High school, finishing that wasn't it. But they had power with God that I wish that I had. 
They had a relationship with God that was so deep. They could, whatever they could read, they lived it. Whatever they did understand. And so maybe they could not conjugate all the verbs and the adjectives. Maybe they didn't have all the decorum we have now. Maybe they couldn't, they weren't as, as refined as we are. So we come now and we have all these wonderful big words. We have all this theology. We have all this education. We have these degrees behind our name, but we can't even pray for somebody with a headache. And that's our problem. What happened to the power? And so we have exchanged our theology, our, you know, our liturgies, our, 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 our homiletics, our hermeneutics, and all these things we've exchanged for power. We've exchanged what, so people can like us, so people will think we're intelligent, so people will think that we are something special. We have changed, we have gotten rid of all that, but uh, all of our power for exchange for that. So that now they will call me Rev. Now they will call me Doc. Now they will call me these things, but you know what? I'd rather just be playing on Milton and have power. I'd rather be just a, some guy on, on, in the back of the church and know Jesus for myself. Because in these days and times, all those degrees, now how, how, how are they working for us now? How does that work out for you? Now, now we're all home. So uh, all these titles, bishop, uh, apostle, elder, all that, how is that working out? It ain't working out too the bishop's home, the apostles are home. <laughs> I don't care who you are, everybody's home. So so you see how 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 that didn't really play into this? That God is has no respect of persons. That guess what? Yes, I'm not suggesting that education is not important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive to be the best we can. But don't let your striving and do what the world does. The world makes these well, hierarchies. The person with the most money. Let me go with the money because I'm. y'all going to be mad at me with this one. Listen, the person with the most money is more successful. The person with more money, must God must love them more. The person, or, the church folk, watch this. The person with the big church. Oh, y'all talk about Jake's. You're talking about uh, um, all these other, other folk all around the country, right, uh, uh, that have these churches. And now the question is not how many people attend. The question is how many people who attend know Jesus. And if all the 10,000 and 20,000 people that come, all they know is you, the preacher, but they don't know Jesus, guess what? You got 20,000 people that still need to be saved. You got 20,000 people that still need a relationship. Are you following what I'm saying? Listening to me uh, talk, listening to somebody pray, does not save you. You've got to have a relationship for yourself. And you've got to be able what, to take the same gospel and take the same word and apply it to your life. And if you can't do that, then guess what? You'd be better off in a church of four people. And I know we laugh. Oh, this person only doesn't have any members, all that. But the few members they have are on fire for God. They can turn the world upside down. I'm going to tell you about 12 guys that hung out with Jesus. When Jesus had the 5,000 and 3,000 and, and they fed them, he had a big, didn't Jesus have, he had a mega church when he was coming along. But as soon as he started preaching the gospel, sure enough, when all the people left, he was left with the 11, really, because one of the 12 was even a demon. So he had 11 really on fire folk for him. And guess what? Those 11 changed the world. I'm, I'm convinced right now I'd rather have 11 that change the world than uh, what than 111 that sit up in service and we're just going through the motions. This is not about the emotions. It's not about money. Yes, you know, of course you're going to collect offerings. You know, and our problem is that we worship, or oh, watch this now, that we worship the results. And we talked about that, I don't know if it was last week or Sunday, but we worship the results more what, than the process. We, we, we think that results mean something. Listen, money does what my money is a power. Money, it, it, the Bible speaks of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You know why the, is that is so? Because money it, it has, uh, has spiritual, spiritual properties, right? Money can do things. Money can buy people. Money can buy stuff. Money, if you have enough money, if you have enough power, if you have enough clout, you can move stuff. But the problem is that, that you cannot buy anointing with money. You cannot buy, you see what I'm saying? You cannot buy the glory of God with money. You can't buy God's favor with money. And so the things you need most in life cannot be bought. And one thing, you certainly can't buy your life with money. Because I don't care how much money you have. When it's God says it's your time, it's your time. And the question is, when he calls you, will you be ready? And your money can't save you. 
Yes, your fame can't save you. Your popularity can't save you. You've got to learn, and I've got to learn, what to reduce ourselves. This process of assessment tonight is I want you to grade yourself. Where are you on the spectrum? A, B, C, D, or have you failed? Have, are you, well, uh, A would be that nobody even knows me, but they know Jesus through me. Oh, are you understand what I'm saying? I wish I could get there. That nobody even knows my name. Nobody even cares to know my name. But because of what God is doing in me and using me, that they know him. And that's where we're trying to get. Or, or, or are you coming underneath that? Well, uh, you know, and failure is like all they know is me. But if they come to me and for prayer, I can't help you. I can say a little couple of words, but when it comes to power and deliverance, I'm, I don't know. I'm just like you. I'm hoping that God will do something because you know why? I don't know him like that. And so that is the, the bottom. You know what? And we all start there, but we've got to come higher and higher. Uh, every round goes, to, uh, you remember that? That song, every round goes higher and higher. We've got to reach the goal where what? Where here, here, we, here we are. Here's Christ, and we got to switch that. Christ comes up, comes up, until we are nothing, and Christ is everything in our life. That's the assessment. And when you can do that, you can, sure enough, disciple someone, because you don't want to see any of you in that person. I don't want the person talking like me, moving like me. I want you to be, what, your own person in Christ. I want you to be your own preacher, your own teacher, your own singer, your own dancer, whatever it is, your own, you know, the person who goes out to the highways and the byways and, and gives out tracts and gives out love and someone who texts us. Whatever it is that you do, do it as unto the Lord yourself and let God raise that up in you. Don't, 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 don't. Uh, um, and again, we admire people. There's no question about it. We admire people and, and you do want to imitate. Paul even said, follow me as I follow Christ. But his whole point was that when I say that, I'm not saying do what I do necessarily. I'm saying what those characteristics of Christ I want you to emulate those characteristics of Christ. I want you to take that into consideration. So tonight, thank you so much for joining me tonight with this. I, I, there's so much more um, I would, I, we're going we're gonna to talk about. Uh, I don't want to belabor the point tonight, but I did want to stress that as you do an assessment, this is the last part of our assessment. Yes, I want you to talk about your walk and your talk with the Lord and all that things, but I want you to understand that we have to lose our cultural bit uh, 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 and 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 just go to what Christ has us. Look back at your ancestors that brought us here. Look back at your grandma and your great grandma and all those folk, and look at the power they had with Christ. How did you think they got over? We have it much easier. Yet God kept them through slavery, kept them uh, through Jim Crow, kept them through all that time through the Civil Rights era, kept them and saved them. And those they kept holding on, not with a lot of education, not with a lot of money. I remember they didn't have preachers where I'm coming up, I remember all the wonderful folk. Yes, I'm sitting around, I'm bragging that yeah, I know Bishop Jakes, I know him, Noel Jones, and, and I know this one and that one and, and, and from all these places, and, and we are, oh, you know them, but you know what? I, let me tell you something about all of them. All of us, you know, I know I own a lock and all of them. All of us came up under these great men and women of God that none of y'all know that they never were famous, they never had money, they didn't have no big church, but they preached the gospel to us, and we do them a disservice if we are preaching anything except Jesus Christ. If we start to, 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 to get, you know, look at money and look at fame and all that and start to, to, to go, to gravitate to that, we do those folk a disservice who brought us this far because they taught us the unadulterated word of God, and we owe them at least to preach that same gospel. I'm trying my very hardest to preach just that, nothing else else but the gospel so that men and women can be saved. Forget about fame. Forget about fortune. I want somebody to be saved this evening. I want somebody to be set free. We've got too many problems to worry about trying to be impress people. We've got too many things swirling in this world. This world's going crazy. So now is the time for us to get serious about our father's business. We had fun. The fun time's over. It's time now to go to work, go to fasting and praying and getting power with God like we used to have in the old days. When we pray that the heavens will come down. When we go into the hospitals, the sick recover. That's the power that God has. This is not a joke. We've seen it happen and we know God never changes. He's still, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He still has the power. But the question is, do we? Uh, or do we just have a form of godliness 
with no power. Oh my goodness, my goodness. I feel the Holy Spirit that's here right now. I'm believing that somebody's getting this and somebody's gaining something from this. I pray you are because I know I am and I'm calling my own self on the carpet. I'm calling, I'm looking at my grades. I don't like my grades right now. I, I don't like my report card, but guess what? Next semester, <laughs> next semester, Oh, I'm studying harder. Next semester, I'm going deeper in Christ because I want to be found. When he comes, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my student. Well done, son, that you did the very best you could with what you had. And I'm, I believe in each and every one of you as well. Listen, I'm done. Uh, 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 no, I'm, I'm stopping, but I'm not done. We're going to come back to this subject again. Um, join us next week. We'll be in, in, in talking about... Um, uh, uh, anointing and anointing those who are around you. You have anointing on you and that can be shared. We're going to talk about that. Would you bow your heads as we close? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, sir, for this time. Thank you for the love you've given us. Thank you for this message you've given us. We pray now, Lord, that this will uh, reside in our hearts and our minds for a long time, that we feast on it, Lord, that we go back to these scriptures and then we find others that, that accompany them, Lord, that we learn to reduce ourselves, learn to minimize ourselves so much so that you are, oh God, large in us, Lord, large in our world, large in our communities, large, oh God, thank you, Jesus, in our lives, so much so that someone will say, what must I do to be saved? That is our objective. That is our goal always. We thank you and we praise you. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let all people say amen. God bless you all tonight. And have a smile upon you. Thank you so much. God bless you, phone phone. Let me put you all back here. God bless you. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Be blessed now. Good night.